Okay, so I'm going to show you all how you know when your pan is ready to cook on. I have the fire on. I'm not sure if you're cooking on electric or on gas, but you don't want to cook it at a high temperature. You want to keep it kind of, I have mine on a little bit like higher than low, because I'm going to bring it up to temperature slow. I got That's my tomatoes. I'm going to go over here and get a little splash of water on my finger, take it to the pan, and drop it in. It just splats. You see how it splats? It did not beat up. The pan is not ready yet. Watch again. No beads, splats. So we're gonna give it a moment more to get ready, okay? I should turn off that water while I wait. I'm going to give it another splat and see how it is. Oh, not yet. It's still splatting, but you can almost hear that it's less of a splat. Okay? It really does take a long time, and you don't want to rush it. You want to take it take its time. Here's our corn. They're getting all ready. Stanton's corn, Mike. Here's the orange lid. Hope you like the blue one. Okay, I'm going to go get a little bit more water and try that again. Still splattering, not beating up yet. We're going to wait. Aren't those colors pretty? Wow, I don't touch a dead rattlesnake. They can, their nervous system still works and you can still be bitten. Tim's reading about rattlesnakes. They have them here in the Catskills. They say don't touch a dead rattlesnake because their nerve system is still working and they could still bite you. So let's go check out, let's, let's look at the pork chops while we wait for that pan. I have them all seasoned up, just Montreal season, and garlic powder. That's it. These are ribeye pork chops. You want to get a ribeye just with one bone on the, on the side like that. You don't need to have that other piece of loin there. People don't need to eat that much rib, uh, that much meat. And it's better to get it a little thicker if you can. If you get them too thin, they're, they're going to cook faster. But, you know, a little thicker is a little better for this. Let's go check that pan again. Just splash the water on your hand. Take it over. Not yet, but it's getting better. It's definitely getting better. And I don't want to turn it up. Maybe just a nudge. No, I'm going to leave it. My instincts tell me. If you turn it up too soon, if you turn it up after not turning it up, it just gets hot too fast. And then you end up having to turn it down anyway because you start cooking it too quick. You're better off waiting until it's ready. This pan has been used over and over, as you can see. But I try to be very careful about what I put in that pan. What I clean it with, just a soft sponge, scrub, a scrubby, but not a, tough, not a tough scrubby. And wooden and plastic spatulas only. Wooden works great, but the plastic is good too. You got some nice ones at your shower. Oh, let's see. Oh, you see guys? It's getting there. I think one more time we're going to let it go. And then it's going to bead. Wow, three minutes. This is a long time, huh? Not worth stopping the video and restarting because it's almost ready. So you just have to sit tight. I bought some Aquanet. Look at this. The I should put it in my hair. Actually, I'm going to spray the flowers with it. Not the fl all flowers, but some of the dry flowers need to have this to help them from falling apart. I'm going to try and get some of those tomorrow. Cattails, they're called. I'm going to get cattails, and I'm going to spray them with Aquanet. Let's go check on that uh, pan now. Okay, I'm going to try to go close so you can see it be... Oh, it's still splattering. You know, it really needs to be, guys. You can't rush it. I'm sorry to tell you that. When you put your food in a pan that's not hot enough, it doesn't cook the same way. 
five minutes now. You see how long it takes. So, I'll just get things ready. Oh, almost. I think the next one's going to be it. We're going to wait one more moment. Checking those tomatoes. Little turtle timer. I have to get my view over here. Okay. Let's look at that corn. It's probably... Ooh, look. I think I'll let it go just a minute more than I'm going to shut it off. Try again. Almost. It's still a splatter. It really is almost there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little oil on this. And as soon as you put the oil on, it's going to start burning. So you have to be ready to put the pork chops on. And I'm going to have to turn on the fan because it's going to be a little bit um, noisy. So let's uh, get this ready, okay? Let's check it with water one more time. Here it goes. Ah, oh, you see the beads? Can you see the beads? Okay, there they go. Okay, so now you can hurry up and throw just a little bit of oil in there. And remember, this is a cast iron pan. So the whole pan is hot. So you don't want to burn yourself. I'm using two hands, but now you see it's smoking up. Let's get this pork chops in there before it doesn't like it. There you go. Look at that. Nice. That's okay. There you go. Now you're going to cook that like that, on that side, at that heat, uncovered, for at least four chops, at least six minutes or so. Maybe, yeah, six minutes or so. And then you're going to turn it over it and cover it with this cover here. Don't add any fluid. Don't add any water. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. And hopefully you're going to like them. I'll touch that once those pork cuts are done. Love you.